Hi, my name is Nancy and this is the Heart Club. He for him, God. Uh, A, capital A for art, R for religion, T for talent, your talent. Um, and our philosophy around here is we put our whole heart into our art for God and for our gifts that we're making that are uh, spiritually and encouraging gifts. So we're in my library today because this is a tapestry I happen to have here. And um, unicorns have become very popular lately. Um, but I wanted to point out that in medieval times, the unicorn was the symbol for Christ. And there are seven world famous tapestries together in New York in the cloisters. And they're called the Hunt of the Unicorn. Um, this is one of them, and uh, this is a symbol of Christ. In, in the seven medieval tapestries from 1495, the, the one of the unicorns, one of the tapestries is the unicorn being stabbed, and the one on the lesson today that we're going to do on weaving um, tapestries is a unicorn, a fabulous tapestry of the seven, where he's, the unicorn's in a fence. I'll show you that in just a minute. But I wanted to just tell you that um, these seven tapestries are, uh, were considered to be like oil paintings in the 14 and 1500s. They, they're Parisian, they're from Paris. They are considered, this series is considered one of the great tapestries masterpieces, art masterpieces in the world. Um, they're in the form, usually in the medieval times and tapestries, they were, they were uh, an art form. They combined um, making the walls warmer in these castles. They combined sound reduction and they loved to do these millefleurs. In this series, the hunt for the unicorn, there are a hundred plants represented, 80 to which botanists today can identify. So this is a gothic style milliflorus, mini, milli, milliflorus, uh, and this trim is really classic. Uh, I just love it. Um, so the, um, it's in the form of, they usually did it in the form of telling a biblical theme. And um, it's called Christological, Christological art, which is what this was. This is believed, these tapestries, this copy, this, these tapestries were believed to belong to Anne. Uh, she was married to King Louis the Twelfth. Um, did I miss anything? Yeah, one of them was stabbed. One of this guy's is next to the, to, to a maiden. Um, they were always associated with an innocent maiden, this, this unicorn, and, um, so, um, the supplies you want is you want a little weaving hoop and some yarn and a needle, and I'll show you that in just a minute. So, the, I like to feature a famous artist. This is the unicorn tapestry art inspired me to tell you about William Morris. He was from 1834 to 1896 in the UK, uh, a world famous tapestry weaver. He had a workshop and it was only run by men. And it took, get this, longer to build a castle than to make one of these tapestries that's on the wall. And it was by, done by teams of men who wove it. So I'm going to show you how to do one. Um, but William Mo Morris, I did did some of you'll you'll recognize some if you look him up. Some of his famous patterns are just beautiful. He did a lot of birds and butterflies and a lot of weaving. His quote, I like his quote. He's the original feng shui simplicity like the Japanese gal, his quote is, have nothing in your house that you do not 
no to be useful or beautiful. Isn't that great? He also said that I'd rather see people uh, have art. If, if there's just going to be for a few people, education, freedom, and art stand in the same category. So he was, he was a serious tap, uh, a tapestry weaver. A tapestry is made, these, these ones, this unicorn one, here's the one that we're going to do today. One of the seven, hunt for the unicorn. He's resting in a little fence. He's got a gold chain. I'm going to show you how to do the gold chain. He's got a lovely unicorn. I'm going to show you how to draw his shape. And, and the, uh, the tail is spectacular. His tail is woven thread, and it is just spectacular. So I'm going to show you these basics uh, that they used in the original 15, 1495. is was made with silver and gilt, which means gold, wefts, so the, the yarn was with silver and gold and wool and silk, mostly silk. So these were made out of silk, which is spectacular. Um, let's see. A tapestry is made, and I'll show you, by repeatedly weaving the horizontal weft thread over and under the vertical warp threads and then tapping them down very firmly. Um, so this, the things that we have here are fun little things if you want to get really into weaving tapestry. <clears throat> I found this in the fabric store. Uh, of course you're going to want your frame to hold your cloth and I found, I'm naming it monk cloth because at the fabric store, it looks just like weaving tapestry, weaving month cloth. So find any kind of cloth that you can weave in and out and in and out. And then I have all of my different, these, these yarns, I, they're acrylic, they're not wool or, wool or silk, but you know what? You can try to find some of that. So lots and lots of different colors for the milliflores, all the different flowers that are in my tapestry. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, it would take way too much time, <laughs> like building a castle, but I'm gonna show you some basics. So it's a cute little project card, so you can tie, you can even label your colors and have them ready to go. Um, I liked these to this one I thought would be great for the unicorn. It's a pearlescent white sparkly yarn. And this is great, a dual colored gold one. Or this is a little thinner. This one for the chain around the unicorn's neck. So here's another little picture of a tapestry. These are, this, I got this at Disneyland. It's made in France. But um, tapestries are really a great art form. So the weaving of the chain around this unicorn's neck, you can't see it very well. Oh, he has a really neat goatee too. And I love, I'm gonna show you this to you close up, but you can pull it up online. The, the, the pomegranate tree, that's very symbolic for uh, medieval times. Uh, even biblical times where pomegranates were hung around the priest's robes. And um, these gazillion flowers and his goatee is really cool. So now don't say to yourself, I can't do this because I want you to be wild and creative as an artist. And if you can't sketch a unicorn onto this fabric, this is a really neat kind of pencil. Get somebody in your family who is creative and artist, artistic and have them just draw you your unicorn shape right here. Um, these are transfer pencils, hot iron. So they're red and they're, they're designed for fabrics. But so you're gonna wanna do a shape of this unicorn. His body's kinda like a kidney bean. So this comes around here like this. They give him a long, stately neck. 
Here's his underbelly. And then his legs, they, it's really cool the way they did his legs. They come forward. Always take a picture, take something from a picture. His legs kind of bend forward like this. And they have this incredible, oh, this is so artistic, the way this tail does all of this stuff. So you kidney bean shape, and you attach a neck to it, and then the back of his head comes up like this. Then he's got a head, a, a kind of a face here. This gorgeous spirally goatee. They were just really having fun. Doesn't seem to have really big ears. He's got an eye right here, and then he's got this spectacular unicorn. It's hard to believe that he is true. Started out as a symbol for Christ in medieval times, and this is another place you can put some of that beautiful yarn of. Um, of, of the gold and then he's got all you have left here and you're drawing is two sweet little arms they don't look very sturdy but he's kind of a mythical figure so then he's got these paws and then if you want to get into the fence around him he that kind of sets it off you can have a major project on your hands and it'll be fun and um, so you got your fence, and you so to draw a circle, you know, you kind of make it around like this. It's oval. So this line has to match this line, and then you have a pen, uh, a pen with a, it's a unicorn. So there's that. So to do these, this weaving, I'm just going to show you a couple little weaving techniques. This is what, on a small scale, the weaving of the chain around the unicorn is. So I'm going to show you on a big scale. They didn't tie knots on the back side. They just left the thread like an inch or two. So I'm going to grab my thread and pull the other one through. So they just kept kind of weaving over them and that secured them. They didn't tie knots. So to make a chain. You're going to weave it around. I think a lot of you who do stitchery know how to do this. And you come up, so you're going to hold it with your thumb, and then you're going to come up here. Let's make big chains. You, yours will be smaller. And then you pull up, and then you have a chain. It secures a chain. Let's do another one. Weave around, hold it with your thumb, pin it underneath, Come up, and you have a second chain. I love this thread. Let's do a third one. Go around, hold it with your thumb, pin it on the inside here, on, go on up here, and you have a chain that's going to be go around this unicorn's neck. Um, now, the way thing, the, the, the actual, let's say we're ready to do, let's say we're ready to do the horn. So you're going to come up from underneath because and you don't tie a knot, so you leave your thread. You can pin it with your finger. So I, I'm going to start out pretty wide at the base of this, of this horn starts out, at, this is going to be at the top of his head, and then I'm going to go a little more narrow, come up more narrow, but, and you're going to, you're going to tamp them pretty clear, you're going to keep them, this is a little wider than apart. Then this one's going to be more narrow, and you're going to take it all the way to, it is so satisfying to sew. And then you can go smaller and smaller, and then you're going to wind up coming, you know, out to about there, to a tiny little, or he could, it could be as long as you want to make it. You could do a whole bunch of rows of these and make his horn. Uh, as far as weaving, 
good luck with all the mellow flowers. These are just beyond incredible. I'd love to see you do a tree and send me a picture. Um, it would be so fun to discover the 80 flowers that are in this world famous tapestry. So the way you thread this is you get these kind of needles. These are nice and they're kind of safe to be around kids. So you, you wrap it over, pinch it tight so it gives you a little knot, and then you bundle it through, and then you grab it. That's how you thread it. Okay. So once again, I'm not making a knot down here. I'm just going to come across from underneath. And this is sort of like the weaving, a sample of how to weave. So I'm leaving some. I'm holding it with my finger. And like it said, you go, the tapestry is made by repeatedly weaving the horizontal weft threads over and under the vertical warp threads, then tapping the horizontal thread down. So there's vertical and horizontal. So this one's going to be the up and down and up and down. There are looms and you can do it that way too, but I'm just trying to show you, as you, I'm sure you know, to, to weave like this. So then there's going to be vertical um, as well. You're going to have to come up with your own ideas and I'm sure you don't need to do it. I, I, you know, you could really truly come up with a really sweet flower. There's another way to do a rosette. One of your flowers, this is the last thing I'll show you. You go like this and then let's see if I can pull this off. So you wrap it around your needle and then you put it in and you pull it through. No, it didn't work. It, it, it would it would make, it, it did work, but it doesn't show. It's a rosette right there of, because it was, this is, um, this is the, right there. Let me try that again. I'll try it on the other side and let's see if we can make it become a rose in yarn. No, it, it's pulling through too much for here on this, on this particular fabric. So, good luck. You're going to need the luck. Um, <clears throat> except that it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So the Bible verse for this particular class is John 14, verse 6. And I'd like you to put that here because this is a gift. You're going to give this to someone if you'd like to. It, you can trim this up around here. You can hang this on a hook on the wall for the person who loves unicorns in your family. But you're going to have a Bible quote, and if you don't mind, putting down John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And it goes on to say, if you know me, then you know my Father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him, which is amazing that, that we, we look like deity. We, we were patterned after the deity. We're created. They are the creators. But I love this quote. So another lesson, I showed you how to make the smock, the stars on the crown smock. And uh, that smock has a crown painted, and you paint your stars every gift you give that you don't tell anybody that you gave a gift. Good deeds are best kept secret. And inside, hidden is a pocket, like in the dark ages when they used to have to hide their scripture verses. The kids did. The kids went to the university and took their life at stake. And so here's my verse, John 14, 6, 6 and it's going to go inside my smock pocket. Um... Future classes, oh, by the way, then you can put it in a box, and like I showed you, you can decorate your box. And this is my logo. Uh, my paintbrushes are across, and you can put a, easily put a palette on just a brown box, and it starts smattering some paint on your box, 
or a brown bag or whatever logo you decide. One of my lessons is going to be about a fabulous artist in the early 1500s named Cronache. His signature, it's, it's a stamp making class I'm going to show. His signature was a dragon with a ruby uh, in its mouth, a crown on its head, and wings. So you come up with your own logo. That's it for today. There's more lessons. There's making painting stained glass lessons. Um, luggage. We're going to, like I said, the Isle of Patmos for John, who was exiled there. That lesson is about painting on luggage, a Greek island scene with the Bible verse that says, go and tell the word to the ends of the earth. Thank you.